to another part of the battery building series. So as you know from the last video, um, I did a test run on the, with the bike, with the batteries in the bike, just a quick test run. Um, and all was good. So I kind of left the batteries a couple of days, just left them to sort of just sit there. All the voltages seem okay, like there's nothing kind of really to worry about. I took, took 10 amp hours out of the batteries. So as you probably remember, I've built two 10S packs. They haven't got any heat shrink or anything at the top at the moment. Um, mainly to make it easier to manage, like ten, two 10S blocks. I think it's the way forward. Um, and then here's all the balance connectors and stuff like that. So today is BMS day and basically my BMS has arrived. Um, this is the Bluetooth BMS um, information on the other side. I'll put the link in the description. Um, we're probably going to start selling these through Cloudstow as well. Um, once you know, once I've tested it and once you know, I've confirmed. Tony Vortex has already tested it and he said it's, he said it's amazing. He's also been working on the app, so um, that is just fantastic. So go and support him on there. He's actually got a link on Play Store for this app. So go and buy it, it's like 5 99 I mean, just do it because it's just supporting the, um, supporting the development of that and there's nothing else out there like this. So really do it, just go and do it. But anyway, so I've got this wired up um, well, it's not wired up at all, but I've got these bare wires here just hanging out of the BMS. So today, what I'm gonna do is, I've got a bunch of these. Now these are like extension leads, because what I've done on the actual batteries, I've put these balance connectors on here, uh, mainly so I can use my balance charger. Now, you know, depending on what you wanna do, you might wanna kinda use the probably proper 5S JST connector, so you, you could then plug them into like Hobby King balancers or, or whatever you wanna do. But basically that's what's on the other end of my charger there. Um, so that's what I'm using. Now, rather than butcher them off, I've got, I've got these um, these connectors, which are just basically like, well, it's just like extensions, like pigtail extension things. So I'm gonna use these to extend those, um, and then I'm gonna cut the wires off of this, and then splice them to the end of these. All nice and professional, and then we should be up and running. This BMS is so simple to, to set up, because, or wire up, because you've got, um, yeah, basically you've got just, it just interrupts the uh, the negative wire, just like a shunt does. Just goes across there. Um, I mean, this is how a lot of BMSs work, but you normally need a positive connection, and the positive actually comes from the balance wire, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, this little thing here is for the for the switch, on and off switch, so with this BMS you get, you don't get this switch, but I've gone and found it on Amazon. It's really nice, a lot of sort of metallic push, push to start, feels good quality. I think it's waterproof, he says, but basically, yeah, it just goes down to the to the plug there. So the idea is BMS is gonna go up the top here, move some of these wires out, and that'll give me, you know, well, I don't know what it's gonna give me, but I might be able to put this fan on the bottom of it. I'm not gonna be running this at maximum, though, so it's probably not really much point. But yeah, that's the plan today anyway, get the BMS sorted out. Um, I've got the Bluetooth app already on this little bad boy, which I'm gonna be using. Might be mounting this on here. The cycle analyst will probably go once I've tested it, but I have this little mini Android device and I can just put that on there and then this, this can monitor. I'll show you quickly um, what it kind of does, what the screen looks like. Um, yeah, so basically this is what the, the front screen of the app looks like. You can go into it, you can see cell voltages and everything else, but um, this is your kind of dashboard. So if that's kind of just sat there showing your amps and your volts um, and your remaining amp hours to go and time and everything else you've got there, watts and temperature, just awesome. All right guys, get in there. This is tedious, tedious work. So I've got 10S done so far, it's just, Oh, it's just tedious. Right, we're done guys. Now the thing with this, because I've had to wire it up so it works on both, so it works on the BMS and the charger, it's fiddly because the way it works is it shares the negatives across um, the cells for the two balance connectors for, for that charger. So it would be a lot easier just to solder these wires directly onto the pack um, and then just have it connected to that BMS all the time. But I wanted the ability to be able to remove these packs, separate them, and, and every possibility. You know, because then if something happens with one pack, you can just basically change it, you know, build a new one or, you know, swap it. So, moment of truth. When you're connecting all these packs together, you've got to be so careful. If you're using two um, packs, you know, again, it's just super complicated because you've got to have, 
Um, it's even more complicated when there's almost all this junk flying around in here. Um, but yeah, when you create these series connections, you've got to make sure you connect the right ones in series, um, you know, so that all these balance connectors actually are in the order that you're putting them in, otherwise it's gonna go bang. So the way I've been doing it is to just measure these connectors to make sure everything is what it's supposed to be. So go start from the end, three volts, cell one, you know, six, seven volts, cell two, all the way up to 20. This one here, this extra wire here is actually to power the BMS. So you've got to, that's the final positive. So whatever one is your maximum cell, like say you're using a 10S pack, then you'd have to get the 10S positive and wire this wire to it so that it powers the BMS. All right, so I'm gonna connect it up. Oh God, what's happening? Nothing seems to be happening. Ah, yeah, you've got to connect the negative as well to the, the battery. Here we go, guys. Ready for the bang. BMS seems to be on. There's a red light there. All right, well, let's see what's, what's occurring. You have to hold this down to shut it down. And that's turned it off. Right, guys, it's about a week later. Um, I'm still wearing the same clothes. Uh, I thought I'd give myself like a few days, it's turned into about a week actually, but um, I thought I'd give myself a little bit of time with this BMS to sort of try and get to grips with it and kind of work out because after I'd done the installation, um, it's, it's still fairly trivial stuff, it's just putting it in the bike and, and making sure it doesn't kind of move around and stuff. So one, it's all in there, it's all in the bike and, stuff, and it's all been done um, and I have actually kind of just been doing a lot of tweaking with the BMS it, it's just awesome. It really is an awesome bit of kit. Like if you're interested in getting a BMS that does um, a lot of stuff and you know really, really will look after your batteries and, and everything else, then do consider this one. But anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you where it is so far. Um, and I think you're gonna like this. So this is probably one of the most advanced um, e-bike setups you're gonna see. Um, this is actually an Android device, a tiny little Android device. I'll, I'll go into this probably maybe in another video, but it's basically a very, very small phone basically. And you know, I was toying with the ideas of what to do, whether to run the app on a mini PC and then kind of have a screen out. But actually all you're doing is just building a tablet. So you might as well just find, you know, a really small device that you can run this on and it, it becomes a really nice display for the BMS. Obviously, you know, you've got your display up here for the um, for this, for the Samsung controller, but I mean, look at that. Is that not eye candy? So let's just show you the system then. So this is the app. This is running the VBMS app. I'll go out of this and I'll come back in and you can see it. So there's the VBMS app. Click on that. It connects by Bluetooth to the BMS, the little Bluetooth icons there. It's green, Shan, it's connected. The BMS is somewhere around here, just underneath this panel. So there's no problem with range issues or anything like that. So you've got voltage, you've got current, you've got your watts, and you've also got your remaining capacity. Now getting small down here is like temperature and, and kind of run time, stuff like that. And then your menu items are right down the bottom. Now if you watch Tony's videos, you'll already know this, this sort of stuff, but here's all the settings for the, for the BMS. It goes on and on and on, and like you can tweak anything to your heart's content. So guys like us that just want to tweak the settings and get everything perfect, you will be lost in this. It is so, so good. Right, so I'm gonna sit on the bike just to make it a little bit easier. Um, by the way, this is a, um, a step down from coming off my 12 volt regular. Another couple of people have been asking me how to wire up, um, you know, your, your setup so you can run your lights and stuff. This is just basically connected to my 12 volt uh, regulator. So it not directly 12 volt into the, into the phone, but you know, for, for a special thing. I'll leave the link to this little um, gizmo here, which is good. It just keeps everything on charge. And it also means when everything's turned off, you get this nice little green light showing you that the bike's on, which is just really cool. Anyway, so other screens you've got in here, this is brilliant. It basically shows you all of the cell voltages. You might not be able to see it um, on the camera because it is quite small, um, but basically it shows you everything you need to know about the battery. Um, you've got your power happening at the moment. You've got warning mes messages up the top. So if a cell goes down um, too far, it will tell you there. It will tell you what happens, it warns you, it bleeps. And you've got your voltage and your current, your top cell um, voltage and the bottom cell voltage and like difference, total difference, you can see my difference here is 0 0.010. Um, so, you know, bang on the nail. All the cell voltage is here, 4.16. Scroll down, these highlight in different colors to show what's actually happening. 
This one's a little bit higher, so it's showing 4.162. I mean, this is like 4.162, and it's highlighting it's red because the others are 4.160. I had a couple of messages with Tony because I was I was panicking, going, one of my cells is like discharging overnight, but of course it's it's like 0, 0.0. It was losing like 0, 0.005 or something. So the ability to be able to kind of change your settings, you know, based on the battery and based on, you know, exactly what you're going to do with the bike is just fantastic actually on the bike as well. So you can just pull over and just make some just make some settings changes and then just carry on riding. So this just, you know, it just doesn't get better than this. Ultimately, the BMS should be the most advanced thing on the vehicle. I mean, in the cars, in the electric cars, the BMSs are incredibly compl complex and they actually control everything else so like the bms is watching what's happening all the time and if one cell changes voltage or something at any anomaly it will send signals to the controller to tell it to kind of you know reduce power all that sort of thing that's how the twizzy works um, and most well all electric cars are going to be working this way now the, the bikes aren't kind of that advanced yet because the bms isn't linked to the controller but it's only going to be a matter of time. It's only going to be a matter of time. And this this is, you know, a really, really good start. So there's another screen in here which allows you to turn on and off the BMS. So you can actually turn it off um, for, for power going out and also turn it on or off for charging as well, which is really cool. You've got balance cells feature as well. So if you hit that, you hear the little bleep inside, and then basically it starts balancing the cells. It'll only balance the cells, obviously, um, you know, if it, if it needs to. But you can actually see um, here it will say balancing, it's not doing the balancing at the moment because obviously they are in balance, so there's no point. Um, but if you go back in here and you just you can just turn that off, it's saying cells are now balancing. It's obviously it obviously wasn't doing them because they're not um, they're not out of balance. So yeah, guys, that is that is it. This is the um, your fuel gauge which goes down. I've been having a little bit of issue with that um, ticking down because when my couple of my cells were going under voltage because maybe i've got my voltage my cell voltage a little bit too high the the low cell voltage and what it would do is it would it shuts the bms off which is kind of what you want but this resets as well i think it's something to do with the firmware in the bms so there's not really much we can do about that at the moment we've been trying to find out who actually makes these bms's because you know, I've got a bit of experience with firmware and software, you know, so we might be able to change something there. So at the moment, I've got my battery configured to fully charge at 83.6 rather than 84. I don't know why it's one of these things I've always had it at 83.6, some of these Chinese charges. It just means that the, the cells aren't going right to the top. Um, to be honest, you could just do it to 4.1 because you're probably not going to lose that much um, capacity anyway. But I'll show you what happens. I'll plug in the charger um, because this is obviously a little bit lower. Um, you know, it's dropped, dropped a little bit overnight because it's probably charging the phone. So I've got my charging socket here, which is like a Nutrix one, quite high quality. This is generally what kind of, I don't know, the e-bike community has decided as a good one because it's actually got double terminals, which you can use. You just wire two wires to one to each terminal. And then it just means you can charge at ridiculous rates. I've had like 30 amps going through that and it doesn't really get warm. So my charging setup, which I'm using at the moment, is a cycle satiator, satiator, whatever you, whatever you say it. Um, I've been looking at these for a long while. I'm going to get some of these for the shop, um, so they're going to actually be available to order on cloudstow.com, the e-bike section of the shop. Um, they're expensive, but I'll tell you what, it is, look at the size of that. It kicks out 5 amps, so it's, it's not the most powerful charger in the world, but it can do anything from, I think, from about 12 volts um, up to 96 or I think it might even go higher than that I don't know but basically yeah it, it's an awesome bit of kit it's got this really nice display on the front that tells you what's going on so you can actually get a reading of what's actually going out of the charger and compare it to what's it's saying on the on the bike or the other things so if you want to know all the information this is fantastic and this just I've just been charging loads of different things with this because it's just so flexible and it's silent because there's no fan in there it's just completely fanless and solid state so here's the charge plug that's what I was talking about. So you've got the double double pins there for this camera will focus on it. Um, so you know that that is that is a solid way of charging stuff. I was watching one of Bruno's videos with the really powerful sports bike that's got 200 kilowatts or something, and he was using, I think he was using like one of these to charge those batteries. It's just insane. So when you stick that in there, this charger here, that little pip, this charger starts charging up and starts telling you what it's doing, and it's saying there it's kicking in 300 or watts or something like that and then on here 
you can see it's reduced now a little bit, minus 2.1 going in, and my 25 amp hours has already gone up. If you remember, it was like 24.9 or something like that. Um, so it's already already clicked up to fully charged. And whilst it's charging, you can check all the cell voltages like that and just check, you know, no any balancing's happening or, or whatever you want to do. So not that you should, but you really can just leave this to just do its thing and be pretty confident that it's, you know, not gonna, not gonna blow up or, or burn the shed down, he says. What I've also been thinking about as well, because of my kind of experience with Android devices and using them for digital signage where they have to manage Android devices that aren't in the place where you are is that you could actually have a system where you can monitor this from another computer or another device. Um, you know, you could remotely see, you know, for, for me, for example, this, this workshop is attached to the house, but it's not convenient always to just come out here and, and just check the battery every five minutes. So if you could monitor it remotely, um, that would be a really, really cool thing as well. So Tony, if you're watching, get your coding hat on. So as you can probably tell from my enthusiasm, um, I'm, re <laughs> I'm really excited about this setup. Um, and I'm just gonna keep testing it more and just, just sort of work out you know, exactly what the best settings are for this battery. I mean, I haven't really mentioned any more about the battery. I mean, there's nothing really to report. It's kicking out what it's supposed to. Um, I mean, I think it's definitely like a 20 amp per cell. There's definitely 20 amp cells. You know, much beyond that, as you'd expect, you're gonna get a voltage sag, you know, up at, up at sort of like the higher end of, of you know, 100 and over 100 amps, you're gonna get a voltage sag. I'm using 5P, remember, so if you're gonna build a big battery, I'd probably do six for, for a bike like this. If I was gonna do it again, I'd probably just add the other cell and just find a way of making it work in here, just so that the voltage is a little bit higher. Um, gives you your cells less strain, but I'm going to run this um, as as hard as I can and as hard as I can and we'll just see how many cycles it actually does. Um, I've got another battery which is actually being built at the moment which I'm not sure is even going to fit in this frame but it might be for something else. It's like nearly three kilowatt hours. So I, I'm not building that one, that's just kind of another project. Um, but I will be building another battery hopefully um, or you know another bunch of batteries with some different cells and I just want to see what we can actually do. Anyway, I'm going to go for a ride and you guys are going to come with me. Actually, no you're not. Um, this video is way too long as it is. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload that separately, the whole ride that I did, which is like the second test run, um, because the test run videos seem to be pretty, going down pretty well. Let's just say the whole comment section on that last one has just gone bonkers. So yeah, love it. Thanks for the support guys and all that. Um, but yeah, I'm going to upload that separately and that's going to be it for this one. Um, hope you've enjoyed it. I'll catch you next time.